Hello, good morning, and welcome to Read the Beats, episode four. It is a lovely spring day today, and we're going to be watching Nicole, who has sent me some of her favorite songs, and I'm really excited. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, so here we are. I am super excited. Thank you so much, Nicole, for doing this. Now, what I know about Nicole is she has a very varied music taste, and which is really cool. I think it will make a great challenge. Hopefully, we get some different songs in there um, to pick some really cool different books. So let's just get straight into this. <laughs> Hi Jess, how are you going? I'd just like to say thank you so much for inviting me along to be part of your Read the Beat series on your channel and I'm looking forward to giving you the songs that I have picked. It took me a hot minute to pick some for you but I think I've got a really good selection. The one thing I will say with Read the Beats, it it does it does take a little while to be able to find those songs because A, it's quite personal and B, like you just kind of sit there thinking like what are some of my favourite songs? Um, and hopefully you can find some books on your shelf or at your local library to uh, read towards these songs. All right, so like my reading, I am very eclectic in my music and some of these songs might completely surprise you. Um, if you've been around for a hot minute on my channel, you already know that I you know, have talked about being a bit of a raver and I like pop and I'm very eclectic and all that sort of stuff. So these songs are sort of going to reflect that as well. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm going to start off with one of my all-time favourite songs. Mm -hmm. It has been a favourite of mine since I was a young kid and it's still today uh, <laughs> a very, 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 very long time after it was released in 1975. It is 1975, wow. So we're looking for a classic. So automatically that's going through my brain is a classic. It's still a hot favourite of mine and I love listening to it. This song was originally uh, put out on a self-titled album uh, called Fleetwood Mac. <gasps> the song that... I love Fleetwood Mac. I love, love, love Fleetwood Mac. Anything you see me from Fleetwood Mac, I'm automatically going to love. That I'm talking about is Rhiannon and it was released ah. in February of 1976. Okay, so this is really interesting just looking at this without even really thinking about books. You've got the colour of the the colour of the cover there, you've got like the black and white and you've got the yellow, but then you've also got little hints down the bottom there with the um with the self-titled album came out in 75 she also said it came out in february so we could try and find a book that came out in february as well so there's lots of options already and i pretty much heard this i was probably in my early teens um when i discovered flute with mac and like i'd heard some of their songs on the radio and all that sort of stuff but in my early teens, um, I heard this song and it just resonated with me. I absolutely loved it. I love Stevie Nicks' voice mm -hmm. and uh, this one has always been a favourite. And I have tons of Fleetwood Mac that I love. They're probably, along with Eagles, are one of my all-time favourite bands. The next song that I have picked for you is uh, was released back in uh, 2003. Okay. It is by Evanescence. Oh, this is another really good band. Evanescence is fantastic. Now, there's only two songs that I've heard from Evanescence. That is Bring Me to Life and My Immortal. Both of them are very, very, very good songs. Um, and, yeah, both of them would be interesting picks, actually. Um, very, very wide-ranging, uh, I guess, like, 
timeline as far as when these songs have been released so far? The song originally appeared on The Fall in the album. Most of you probably already know which song I'm probably going to say. So there is a book called Fallen by Lauren Kate. Um, if any of you ever want to play along and read the beats with me, there is a book called Fallen. Personally, I don't recommend it. I've read it. Um, and if I hadn't DNF'd the series, I could probably go and read the next in the series. But I'm not. Uh, it is My Immortal. <laughs> uh, and I just love Amy Lee's voice. Like her voice just it gives me chills. It, yes. It can provoke emotion. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I almost come to tears every time I listen to this song. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites. It's also one of. Uh, my my kids actually love this song too. As soon as they hear it, they all start singing and whatnot. It is very, um, no, it's just. It's very raw. The song itself is a very raw book. And like Nicole said, it's very emotional. Like you can, you can feel that emotion coming through. Um, it's been a hot minute since I've actually listened to the song. But also just looking at the um, cover art there, it, kind of gives me the fallen vibe like as in the book fallen so there we go there there is one option it just resonates I, don't, I can't even explain why it resonates with me yeah but it does and uh i know this is going to sound a little bit morbid but this is actually the song that's going to be played at my funeral <laughs> i can understand that actually I could, I could, I could go with that. Um, hmm. Okay. I just, because of that, I just thought of a book that could work kind of very like a bit of a stretch and a bit off the wall, but I just thought of a book that could work for that. I've already told Savannah, um, and I just, I love the song so much, I just want it to be played, mm -hmm. uh, as I leave at this earthly plane, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the title is very, very um, apt for that anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on. So another thing is, is um, looking at the title, My Immortal, you could do anything with an immortal creature. The first thing that's coming to my mind is a vampire, and that just made me think of another book that I could do that I'm reading in October. Okay. I'm getting so many options from this. Nicole, you're like, your taste in music is incredible. All right, on to the next one. And this is my, this one, the third one was a hard one to pick because I have several songs uh, from different bands and all that sort of stuff that have really, really resonated with me. Um, and it is a, like Celtic. Uh, music that I like mm. and so basically there was a lot of songs that I could have went to uh, there was a band that I was thinking about Dead Can Dance um, I love a lot of their music it's very tribal it, it just it, it feels like it, it sings to my soul and so this was really tough and I wanted to go with something uh, Celtic because it does actually sort of suit my personality and all that sort of stuff. And the song I ended up landing on uh, was uh, My Mother's Savage Daughter. The original oh, uh, okay. writers of this was back, it was released back in 1997, I believe. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that um that name. I'll leave that to you, Nicole, <laughs> to pronounce that name. Or well, 98, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And I come across this song in the early 2000s. And basically, this song has resonated with me. Now, there are many, many covers of this song. Mm. You can find it on TikTok. You can find it on YouTube. You'll probably even find it on Instagram. Somewhere, someone has done a cover. And there are many beautiful voices out there that sing. I love that. I love that songs like this have been given so many different covers because that gives way to like different versions, different feels, stuff like that. Song. But as I said, uh, this was originally released back in the late 90s and I believe the uh, original creator of this, I've written it down, is Karen Khan. Um, the two compo I'm not sure if it's two composers or whether Karen Khan also goes by Windereth uh, Bergensdotten. <laughs> a mouthful yes but 
if not it's two they're they're the two composers of this song um and i just i love celtic music not all celtic music resonates with me but some just really sings to my soul and i absolutely love it so this one is um the one that i've given you is by uh katarina uh katarina sorry so there's an e in front of it um shelhova sorry uh is how you pronounce her name um great work <laughs> I would not have got there. She has such a voice that just it just goes straight to my soul. It puts goosebumps over my body. It make it makes me tear up. But this song, the reason I love it so much, it just reminds me that I don't need to quiet myself down. I need to be loud. I need to be okay. heard. I need to be seen. Okay. And that's what it does for me. Um it is interesting hints there. So a song about someone who is coming into their own and like really learning how to find their voice maybe um maybe learning how to shut out all the bullies or um yeah i'm 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 finding a very like i'm i'm feeling feminine feminine like warrior vibes just right off the bat it's very tribal feeling um it, it is it is celtic but it's it, it has that that beat to it that just really sings to your soul so they are the three songs that i have picked for you i hope that you like them i it took me a hot minute to pick some to narrow it down because there are a ton of songs that i could have given you that i think that you would have really enjoyed the narrowing down is what can what can be really hard i totally get that i have tr i have troubles every month myself when i'm giving uh songs to um booktubers for read the beats um i think there's only one booktuber that is coming up that i knew pretty much straight away what i was going to give them uh but the rest of them it can be quite a, it can be quite a struggle and um yeah so i hope that you enjoy listening to these i hope that you enjoy reading through the lyrics for all these they're quite meaningful and mm -hmm. everything from each of these songs and researching them a little bit more and i can't wait to see what books you pick for these three songs all right i'm out of here and i'm looking forward to seeing your video and seeing what books i'm going to read thanks jess bye i love blue girl She's incredible. Like and subscribe. Okay, so welcome back to the bookshelf. Um, for song number one, we had Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac. I love Fleetwood Mac. There's a few of them that are actually on my favourites list anyway. Um, so to hear a Fleetwood Mac be mentioned, I was so excited. Um, now the song that... Nicole picked for me was Rhiannon um and that's sung by that's sung by Stevie Nicks and let me tell you a story and this is kind of embarrassing but when I was younger there was a certain movie that I watched and I swore for the longest time that it was Stevie Nicks um and the movie that I watched was Practical Magic so it wasn't Stevie Nicks who played one of the aunts it was Stockard Channing um, and like for the longest time they looked and sounded kind of exactly the same so I swore it was Stevie Nicks um, and I think I said that when I was a teenager like a teenager when I was about to watch it I was like oh you know you mean the one with Stevie Nicks in it and they're like no Stevie Nicks was not in Practical Magic uh, but anyway because of that and because of that memory and just hearing Stevie Nicks' voice again, it immediately brings me back to that. And so I am going to be reading Practical Magic. Now, Nicole, who picked the song, and also Coda have like a book club together at Seriously Serious. Um, and they're currently doing the Practical Magic books at the moment. Now, I have not been very good at keeping up with that. Uh, so I am well behind. Um, I think I got to page 40. There we go. I got to page 40. Uh, and then I just, like, life got really busy and stuff like that. So I will be finishing Practical Magic. And I am so excited. And I actually really want to watch the movie again. Um, but I will finish the book first. Now, the second song that we got 
was My Immortal by Evanescence. And that song brings me chills every time. It's like a it's a ballad. It's almost quite a sad ballad. So the book that I have picked for this one is actually Lasher because Lasher, as far as we know uh, from The Witching Hour, Lasher is immortal. Um, hence my immortal. Um, and with the newest Mayfair witch, um, she kind of, she doesn't like him to start off with um, and then like they kind of start falling in love and so in that way he is her immortal as well. So it just, it made sense for me to put that on. I'm quite excited to read this. I'm actually buddy reading this with Nicole and Coda uh, this month as well. Now the third song we got was Savage Daughter. And this was, Nicole is right, it's very tribal. Um, just, it gets those strong feelings straight away. And, you know, I felt very strong when I was listening to that. And I, I, and I was thinking, so I was like, strong feeling um maybe something to do with like a strong topic and then there was a line in there that said i will not cut my hair i will not lower my voice uh i believe is what it said um and that made me think when i was looking at my bookshelf like someone who is speaking really loud about something um and so the book that i have chosen for that is the immortal Hey, look, immortal. <laughs> I just, I just got that. Um, the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. And the reason I've chosen this for her is because her, her story is one that kind of needs to be told and one that needs to be appreciated and one that needs to not go down by the sidelines as much as it has. Uh, this is about a woman who originally was diagnosed with cancer and she died of cancer. Um, and I mean, the tagline here says her death changed the history of medicine, which it did. When she was going through treatment and stuff, um, she had cancer cells that were essentially taken without her knowledge. And they were used for medicine and they were cloned and they were modified and stuff like that. And so her cells have been what have helped with all sorts of cancer treatments. Um, vital for developing the polio vaccine uncovered secrets of cancer viruses and the effects of the atom bomb um, helped lead to important advances in ivf uh, cloning gene mapping and have been bought and sold by the billions and so this is like still going on um and so there's the question of like there's a question of is it right? Is it legal? Um, and so this reporter is kind of taking on that challenge and if nothing else, telling her story. Now, I'm so excited to read all three of these books. Uh, I think all three of them are going to be quite different. Oops. I think all three of them are going to be quite different from each other. Um, great song selection, songs selection nicole i i loved every single one of them that is going to be it for me until i catch you in the next clip so i am here reading practical magic by alice hoffman um i just got to page 54 which is essentially the start of part two premonitions um and this is an interesting one because he's not really chapters as such there's only these parts and so it just keeps going on and on and on which in one respect makes it quite hard to read because there's not really a break until you get to these parts but then i don't know there's something about it that's just very warm and cozy and homely and like nothing much has really happened uh we've had sally um and of course, Jillian, and Jillian's moved away for quite some time at this point. Sally's had her children, and in this book, she loses her husband, 
like she does in the movie, but she goes through a period of exactly one year of mourning. Um, and then she starts noticing like spring leaves and stuff that are opening up, which is a really cool visual. And then she kind of decides to get out of her rut and wakes up a bit more. Um, and this kind of leads her to moving into her own place with her and her kids uh, somewhere a little further away from the aunts. The aunts themselves aren't really a big part of the story at the moment. Um, you just kind of get them in the background. I would say it's definitely mainly following Sally. Very nice, very, it's, it's cozy for me and it, it's, it's quite homely. Um, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but I am enjoying it so far. So we will keep reading and I will catch up with you in a bit. So I just got home from work. I apologize for uh, my look. My hair is an absolute atrocity. Uh, I've got maybe about 100 pages to go in this. Um, the story itself, like we've still got the characters, you know, we've still got the aunts, we've still got Sally and Gillian and uh, Kylie and Antonia, which are the two girls that Sally had. Um, and yeah, it's varied a lot from the a lot from the movie uh which was quite a surprise i'm not sure how i feel about that um i think because i'm so because i'm so loyal to the to the movie um i have to say i'm missing the aunts a lot this book is not focused around the aunts really at all there's they mentioned a few times you know when they go for like summer holidays and stuff like that they still go to the aunts um but even then, they're just barely mentioned. I don't think the aunts have really had any dialogue in this. Uh, and I don't know, the, aunt, the aunts in the movie were like my favourite. Um, were my favourite thing. So, well, almost my favourite thing. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, it's interesting the variation that they've chose with uh, Jimmy. Uh, and how they're resolving that issue. Um, again, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It is a good book, but if you're going into it with the expectation that it's going to be like the movie, you're going to be disappointed. Um, but if you go into the book knowing that it's going to be completely different and just kind of go along for the ride, then it is a good book. I'm not feeling five stars. I'm feeling four stars. Um, Unless something drastic changes either way, that's probably what my opinion is going to be. But I will check in when I have finished the book. Uh, and I will talk about my final thoughts then. So welcome back to my bookshelf. Um, thoughts on Practical Magic. So it's been a little while since I've finished this. Um, it was a little hard to read with the no chapters and just the part. But because of that, it was also very bingeable like you didn't really want to put it down until you got to another part um so I did kind of like that in that respect um like I said the story is 
very different from the movie very very different i mean you've still got the characters um definitely still miss the aunts and i think it's because the aunts went there as much as i wanted them to be is the reason i'm giving this a 3.75 it is a good story it is one that i recommend people read like even older young adults uh for this um definitely a good story but yeah i don't i don't know whether i want to whether i want to continue on the series or not um i'll have to see if they are at the library if they are then i will go ahead and read them but um yeah not what i was expecting um i mean definitely it's not a bad book 3.75 like it's not a bad rating it was it was fine um but yeah definitely i want to go and watch the movie again now so that was practical magic for uh, rhiannon It's been a while since I started later um, and like I'm talking as two weeks later it's the 14th of October uh, but I've made it 10 chapters and I'm on page 300 and it's interesting there is a lot going on right off the bat so first I mean Lasher kind of catching up from the Mayfair Witches Lasher is this thing that has kind of made himself within the Mayfair family if you will uh and like the more generations of Mayfair which is the more um connected he is and the more powerful he is and it's happened that Rowan Mayfair something about her she actually managed to give birth to him physically uh and so he's this weird little newborn baby man thing that is just running around the world with her uh so yeah she disappears from the mayfair family and leaves her husband and goes along with lasha and so in this book at the moment the mayfair family are trying to track them down and trying to find her um and michael is like really worried about her and stuff like that um meanwhile there's this whole plot line about a old gramophone uh and this 13 year old kid is trying to find it with the help of one of the passed away uncles julian and while she's doing that she's trying to seduce michael 
And so that's just kind of like the, the inbreeding and the incest is still really strong in this book. And like Michael is not into it at first, but then like all of a sudden he's just kind of being sucked into it. Uh, and I thought that was really weird. It makes sense for the story. It doesn't make sense in my brain. <laughs> and then we've got this other storyline where you do see a little bit of Rowan and Lasher and their travels and they have gone all over the place. And I do mean only a little bit because like they're very much in the background at the moment. Um, but she has managed to get genetic testing on Lasher um, and send some of his genetic material to an old friend of hers uh, at, I believe it's the Keplinger Institute. Um, and so there's this Dr. Lark who is like doing all this genetic testing and there's some really weird answers that are coming up. Uh, and so he's actually wanting to genetically test the entire family. Uh, so he is in New Orleans at the moment with Lightner and, and like everyone is in New Orleans. There's just been this funeral of an aunt um, who died of uterine problems, um, massive bleeding I believe. And then while this funeral is going on somebody else has died of exactly the same thing. So there's this problem that is starting to arise and my suspicion is it's because of all this inbreeding and this incest. Uh, but I don't know, it could have something to do with Lasher. I don't know. It is interesting at the moment. Um, 300 pages in, so that's a little over a third of the way, I would say. Yeah, interesting. Um, interesting to see how this relates to Lasher because the title of the book is Lasher and we haven't actually seen a lot of him or Rowan, so I'm hoping to get more of him as we go along, but we will see. excuse the appearance uh, as you just saw in the last clip I have a child <laughs> that is refusing to move uh, it's been a wee while since I updated you um, I essentially grabbed Lasher yesterday and read as much as I could uh, I think when I last updated you I was about 300 pages in and I was saying I was quite confused and stuff like that after that 300 pages, things began to get a lot clearer and we understood why Mona was interested in this old gramophone. Um, we do get to see more of Lasher and uh, Rowan. Um, and you start understanding a little bit more about Lasher's history or the possibility of Lasher's history. Uh, and you get to visit Dunleith and then you start hearing a lot of things from Julian's point of view uh, and his story. And he is essentially one of the deceased uncles. Um, and I'm not going to lie, part of his story was really gross, like really gross. We're talking about sexual stuff with his own family, uh, which is part and parcel with the Mayfi family. But reading that just is not... Just is not the nicest thing. Um, but very interesting. Um, I think as soon as I started hearing from Gillian's story and things started getting a little more into place, I wanted to keep reading it. And I think that's why I read so much. I'm currently on page 655. Uh, so that's a decent chunk that I've managed to read yesterday and a little bit this morning. Uh, so I am going to finish this book today and I will come back to you hopefully more appropriately dressed and I will let you know what my final thoughts are. 
Okay, so I finally don't have a cat child. So let's talk about Lasher. Lasher was a very interesting book once you get past that first 300 pages. What I didn't like was the amount of really weird, gross incest. And it's quite graphic as well. That is the one thing I didn't like. The lore around Lasher and the, I guess you could say, mythology about what he is. Although it's not really mythology because it's real. Um, that was really interesting as well. Um, Anne Rice had such a, an incredible imagination. Also, like going to all these different places um, was really interesting in the book as well. Dunlath was an incredibly fascinating read. So Lasher himself, we find out what Lasher is. Lasher is a Teltos, uh, and that's where the third book comes in. Um, but a Teltos is essentially this race that has been going on for a long, 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 long time. And they are, I don't know if they're immortal, but they're like essentially immortal. They don't really age. So that they, they kind of, for a while, they were almost extinct. Um, and when they left their island and came to like, I guess, Earth or, you know, Dunlath, um, the humans kind of found out what was happening um, and they started trying to breed these Teltos, these beings, for essentially an army, like an unbeatable army. That was kind of what was going on and it's almost like that is happening now. Like Lasher is almost trying to start this army or like he's trying to reinvigorate the like the being of Taltos. Um, and there's, towards the end of the book, there's something with the Telemasker. And like throughout the book, I kind of had a really weird feeling about what was going on. Like I almost don't trust the Telemasker now because there's, there's a few of them. Hi. There's a few of them that were quite dodgy. They were just like, yeah, acting really dodgy. Um, and like Aaron ended up getting fired and Aaron's progeny ended up getting fired from the Telemasker. And like they hadn't really done much wrong apart from the fact that they stayed in contact with the Mayfair family. Um, so I don't know. There's, I don't really trust the Telemasker that much anymore. So it'll be interesting in book three what actually happens with that um i don't really know how book three can work um because to be fair how this book ended it did not end on a cliffhanger or anything like that like to me it almost could have just been a duology so that'll be really interesting to see because again Taltos is quite a long book so we'll see what goes on um i'm gonna give this a four kind of on the lower end of a four um like it, again it was a good book there was just some stuff in there i felt wasn't really necessary um we're talking about like a 13 year old seducing her uncle um and and then the uncle just going along with it i don't want to spoil anything but yeah there's 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 some stuff in here that doesn't need to be that doesn't need to be here so i can't really give it any higher than what i did but the law behind what lasher is was actually quite interesting so that's why i'm giving it a four and it works for my immortal because the Taltos are essentially immortal anyway Um, my phone just died as I was updating you. Um, anyway, yes, those doctors, to take cells without the patient's permission would, in today's, hopefully in today's ethics and legal um, side of things, be a faster clock um, of lawsuits and stuff like that. Um, the, <laughs> yes, her cells have been used for some of the most incredibly important medical advances. Um, but at the same time, 
to not have permission, to not be told, and then for the family to only find out 25 years later. It made my blood boil because there was something. So she went to John Hopkins um, Hospital and like one of the top hospitals in the country at the time. Um, and it was built as a charity hospital. Uh, so like they didn't have to pay for treatment. There was something in one of the early chapters that was like saying that because they get like this free treatment and they get such good care and stuff like that, that it's almost like it's almost their payment to have cells collected and studied um, without their knowledge. Uh, that's kind of how the dude who, who was running the studies and experiments thought about it and that just pissed me off that no no you no just no that is not right to be thinking that at all and I mean granted this is back in the 1950s um where things weren't so PC but yeah that just, yeah, that really pissed me off. I'm hoping there's more explanation about the cells and, like, the, not the chemistry, but, like, the physiology of, like, the cells and their growth rate and things like that. That kind of stuff really interests me, um, as well as, obviously, hearing from the family um, and hearing exactly how they found out about these cells 25 years later after after Henrietta died, um, that, yeah, that will be really interesting to me. I'm on part two, um, and I could actually see myself binging this, but I've got stuff that I have to go and do today. Um, but yeah, I should get this finished today, so I will uh, keep you in the loop with my thoughts. Okay, so let's talk about the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. Um, this one I'm going to say straight up, I have given five stars. I started off with giving it a 4.5, uh, but then straight after reading the book, I watched the movie with Oprah Winfrey. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just, it's such a good book. Please, if you haven't read this, please go ahead and read it. Um, there's a lot of libraries that have the audiobook. The audiobook was really good. I immersion read part of this. Um, this is essentially a story about a young black woman in her 30s, early 30s, that died of cervical cancer. Now, when she went to hospital, it was John Hopkins uh, Hospital, who was essentially one of the only hospitals treating black people at the time. Um, when she went there and she had surgery to take out the tumour that was in her cervix, they went ahead and took tissue samples without her knowledge or her consent um, and those tissue samples grew really well in the lab um, and have been used ever since for the development of a whole host of things um, we're talking about the polio vaccine which was quite early on you know space missions to see how cells worked in zero gravity we're talking about even being used to test the effects of a nuclear bomb. Uh, we're talking about the HPV vaccine um, quite recently. Um, her cells were used to kind of determine that it was the HPV virus and what strain it was. Um, we're talking about genetic, map genetic mapping. Um, so many different things. Um, and yeah, the family didn't find out until about 20, 25 years later. And even then, when people approached the family about what was going on um they weren't straight they weren't straight up and honest about what they were using it for or if they were there was a major there was a major communication barrier and then we had the doctor who was collecting all of these blood samples to be used for gene mapping um who wanted the blood to see if it carried the same gene markers. Um, but essentially all the family knew was they wanted to be making sure they didn't have the same cancer as their mother. Um, 
And so for the longest time, her daughter, Deborah, was like in peril um, and lived in absolute fear. And so fast forward to late 1990s, early 2000s, Rebecca Scope comes along and finds the family and convinces them to kind of talk to her about her, her mother and the life that she had and the person who she was. Um, now, the family had never been compensated for the taking of the tissue and also like the massive profits that were made from their mother's tissue um and this family lived in absolute poverty for the longest time um like couldn't afford to go and see a doctor chronic health conditions all of that kind of stuff because they did not have money to pay for it fast forward to 2021 the final the family finally made a lawsuit against one of the big pharma companies um in 2023 they finally made a settlement and so that took so long um and the reason this book was so good for the song savage daughter was because deborah once she started speaking out about it she was savage like everybody knew what was going on and when she wanted something she would get it um and deborah was like so active in trying to find out about her mother and even her sister uh who was in a institution in the 50s um and who died when she was 15. uh so with the help of rebecca um deborah was able to get a lot of those answers and rebecca also was able to get a lot of answers and put those in this book it was so astounding just how much medical advances have been made because of these cells um and no recognition for the longest time was ever given to the family um and that was quite sad and so this was a story that needed to be told and it was a story that was told and i think because of that the family was finally able to get compensation for the injustice um that, that was done to henrietta um and i say that knowing that there was no law against taking people's tissue without permission as you've seen in previous clips um i talk a little bit about that um but to me it was still huge injustice um and so because the story has been told because they haven't been quiet about it um the family is finally able to have compensation and hopefully able to pay for medical treatments so this book unfortunately Deborah passed away before this book was able to come out properly I think it was about nine months before the book actually came out I mean the family Rebecca still fought still spoke about Henrietta and the injustices um and the family themselves they didn't want any trouble with the companies um for the longest time they said you know we don't want to get in the way of medical advances and science and stuff like that but a little bit of recognition would be nice but for me i feel better knowing that they have been compensated in some way uh so yes that was for savage daughter by e katarina shelly hover I apologize for the mispronunciation of that um but yeah that is why i chose the immortal life of henrietta lax for a savage daughter and it was a fantastic read so my question of the day for you is have you ever read um any of these books any of these books what did you think of them um if you have read henrietta lax let me know your thoughts about what has happened with the family um and yeah, that was Read the Beats episode for with Nicole. Again, thank you very much, Nicole, for trusting me with your favorite songs. I really had appreciated them. Um, I love Savage Daughter. That just gives me the chill every time I listen to that now. Until next time, bye-bye.